hello everyone uh, today we are just joining you all from the icu and the vindya from the uh, philips company has kindly uh, come round for us and agreed to do a little demonstration on pico and how to set it up as well as um, how to uh, set up the monitor specially okay so you all can uh, listen and anybody who couldn't join can go through the recording right okay over to you vindya thank you so much for coming thanks mira Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Vindya, application specialist from Philips Healthcare. Uh, I will be demonstrating about cardiac output PICO monitoring uh, today for you all. So uh, let me start by doing a small presentation. Um, first of all, uh, let's uh, see what cardiac output monitoring is. What PICO actually is. Uh, okay. So uh, cardiac output measurement is based on a technique called thermo dilution. Uh, what is if i talk about what thermo dilution is it's actually a technique based on the concept that uh, that the flow rate of a system can be determined by measuring the temperature change which results from introducing a cold solution into the system so what we basically do in pico is uh, we first uh, like uh, we set up a say line a cold say line most preferably what we recommend is uh, something below 8 celsius Uh, if it is zero Celsius liquid, that is most accurate. Like you can get more accurate readings from it. So uh, we inject that saline through the CVP line to a patient, and we need a separate femoral artery already inserted into the patient. What we do is we detect the temperature change uh, of the saline uh, from the CVP and through the uh at the distal lumen like uh, from the, the the tip of the femoral artery so that is what thermo dilution actually is so that is uh, if you all can see my uh, the slide you can see that so for cardiac output measurement a solution called than the blood temperature normal but blood temperature is added to the blood uh, and the resulting drop in temperature is recorded at the downstream site so downstream site in the sense we uh, i will show you our pico catheter Uh, so there is a very small tip at the end of our catheter that is where actually this temperature difference is measured so this temperature change over time is displayed from this curve the monitor calculates cardiac output value and this cardiac output value is inversely proportional to the area under the curve so uh, it's actually mathematical derivation so uh, i will go uh, to the next slide so that is actually what thermo dilution is then how cardiac output works so Uh, pico method combines transpulmonary thermo dilution measurements with a technique called arterial pulse contour analysis so uh, so first we basically detect the temperature difference from the like from this catheter uh, cvp line and the femoral arterial line and then what they do is they mathematically math through a mathematical formula they derive the continuous cardiac output through a measurement called uh, the pulse contour analysis so this combine Uh, this combination enables the clinician to directly measure the cardiac output, cardiac index, and other very uh, like hemodynamic parameters, very complicated and very useful hemodynamic parameters like extravascular lung water, then uh, systemic vascular resistance, ITBV, and everything. So, uh, if you have any questions, please just drop a message or you can ask me. Mm. then so you can see on the screen like the hemodynamic parameters that can be derived from cardiac output pico monitoring so for example if extravascular lung water then stroke volume systemic vascular resistance then intrathoracic blood volume stroke volume variation pulse pressure variation then global end diastolic volume cardiac function index systemic vascular resistance so these are some of the parameters that can be derived through uh, the pico method then so how we can basically set up this is uh, so like i told you earlier a fluid with known volume and temperature is injected into the right atrium through a cvp catheter so first of all i will show through uh, like how the setup is done so we need us uh, the continuous cvp monitoring like and uh, for, to connect our injected temperature probe we need the the distal most lumen to Uh, uh connect our pico temperature probe and then the fluid with the known volume and temperature is injected through this port and this injected bolus mixes with the blood in the heart and the lungs and then this change in blood temperature is measured with the thermistor like i told you earlier there is a very 
very very small thermistor which cannot be even seen with our naked eye so that is present in the the tip of the uh, uh, the femoral catheter so this uh, thermistor detects the temperature difference and that's the distal end of the arterial catheter placed in the femoral artery line so like in the setup you can see how it is detected then uh, like uh, this uh, the the the, the like picture that is shown on the screen uh, a curve cardiac output curve like this is yeah like uh, seen on the screen so and then the arterial uh, abp waveform is uh, displayed like this so uh, this explains a little bit about the process so i will anyway uh, do that uh, through my monitor then how this picot setup is done so first of all uh, so this is basically what how can how we can set up uh, monitoring picot so first the first step is actually set up the arterial line uh, using the arterial catheter and the appropriate uh, transducer kit from the partial medical system and then second is set up the central venous line using a conventional cdp catheter and the and a cdp line connect the injected temperature probe housing that is part of the partial transducer kit to the venous line so you all can see this setup but when we come to the monitor you will understand it better uh then the next step is connect the injected temperature probe to the injected temperature probe housing and then like a, a menu a display like this will pop up that is setting how to set up the uh, continuous cardiac output so i will go to that like uh, rather than doing it from the presentation i think it would be better if yeah. i do it from the monitor so uh, uh so like i told you earlier uh how we derive pico is using a technique called uh, thermodilution so like i told you like first of all we have to inject a uh, non volume manner like a non temperature of cold say line to the cdp line of the patient and then we already we have to set up the femoral arterial line of the patient like you can actually select like there are a lot of uh, pico catheters where you can insert the pico catheters like femoral brachial and everything but what we most recommend is the femoral arterial line because like that gives you more accurate reading rather than other methods so uh, here you can see this is a femoral arterial catheter so you don't need a separate invasive blood pressure uh, line like what you normally insert to patient you can insert that uh, pico catheter like pico femoral arterial line as well as you can connect this to the normal arterial line as well so you have two ports here i don't know if you can see it so one port is this red color one can you all see that yes okay so this this is where it gets connected to the uh, uh cardia output cable like i will just roughly show here but i will go into detail so, so you can see yeah. so to identify it is you have four pins on this right so you can see there are four holes uh, for pin insertion on this cable so right so it comes from the uh, pico uh, the philips monitor okay so it should go and connect to the red end of the femoral catheter okay so can you see the femoral catheter and the red end the big red end so it it also has four pins inside and this has the receiving um, four um, kind of hole for those four pins right okay right then the other port which goes to the our pressure transducer kit is uh, like very near to that so one end goes to the cardiac output cable and to the monitor and the other end it goes to your transducer kit idp line and it get connected to the transducer kit straight away this is the arterial catheter that we need we need a monitor and we need the connecting cables i will do it and uh, plus and we need the yeah, mean will, ray uh, mean ray transducer set so which i will show you like the the conventional transducer kit that we use for arterial lines and central lines okay so we need one of those which should be connecting to this uh, white color port over here all right so it will go into a separate transducer which is mean ray compatible or the sort of like uh, i'll show you the the sort of which has the pin connection right okay so uh, like madam told you 
uh, what we need for this set up is this procedure is you need to have a Philips monitor or someone else. Anyways, like we are the authorized person for PICO monitoring. So uh, whoever is monitoring PICO has to uh, order everything through us. So PICO monitor, then you need to have a cardiac output ex uh, uh, module. Actually, so this is actually cardiac output extension. Uh, but uh, if you if you have seen uh, Philips MX550 and high-end monitors, modular type monitors, you get a very small uh, module which can be connected to the monitor. So this is an extension that we call a small module. So anyway, whatever it is, you need to have a cardiac output extension or module. Then you need to have an arterial line as well as a CVP line. That is what we need from the monitor. And then we need to have the cardiac output cable. That is this. If you can see, this is the Pico cardiac output cable, Philips one. Uh, and then there is a uh, there is a port over here. That that is the port which gets connected to the CVP line of the patient. So uh, we insert a blue color. Pico te temperature probe. So this is the Pico temperature probe, blue color one. This blue color temperature probe get connected to a uh, injected housing, colorless injected housing like this. I will show you how it gets connected. This is the one we have already connected. Yes. Yeah. It? Yeah. So these are the sort of cables that you need. So it has two pins on the brown port. Yeah. And then there is a blue color uh, bit here, which is a sort of sensor, thermal sensor, to which we have fixed the injected housing. The injected housing. Okay. So this is the injected housing, which comes in a sterile pack. Yeah. It is single use. So this is the single use sterile pack, uh, the uh, injected housing. Okay. So this is the one should go into this blue color uh, temperature sensor. Okay. So there is a uh, receiving uh, sort of a hole here and can you see there's a pin inside uh, a lead looking pin so it should go in and fix there then you will hear a click yeah exactly yeah you will hear a click if it fixes properly okay so there is a sort of a bigger end and there's a smaller end so it nicely fits into this side okay right. and then uh, it's uh, all our cables are color coded so you won't get confused so this brown color port goes into the brown color uh, port of the cardiac output cable. So you can easily connect it like this. So this is the end. Look carefully. So it has two uh, pins inside. If, can you everyone see? Kumudu, can you all see? Is it yeah, two pins. Yeah, so it has two pins and it has two receiving holes. Can you see on this side? So it is brown. So as we said, it is color coded. And you can see there's a gutter and a ridge here. So it nicely fits into the gutter and the ridge. So carefully you have to fix without damaging the monitor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, right, sir. That's how it is. All right, so it nicely fits in. Okay. okay. So uh, this goes into the CVP line of the patient. Okay, so uh, if you have like three or four way tap, I don't know how your procedure is, madam, but what we uh, ask is we need the distal most lumen from the, yeah. uh, the CVP yeah. line. So if it is in the central line, the uh, normal one, it is the brown one. Okay, so it should go to the brown port, which is the proximal most one for the patient and yes. distal most one for one, the one. operator. Okay, so this should go and connect onto the uh, distal most port and it should be. Uh, through a three-way tap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it should be through a, through a three-way tap. Because like for this procedure, madam, you need to have a continuous CVP yeah. monitoring as well. So yes. CVP cannot be interrupted in the middle. So uh, while monitoring CVP, we yeah. will be injecting our uh, cold cell line through this. And uh, I On have... Side, to... Yes, ma'am. So the three-way tap goes here. Yeah. Three-way tap goes here. This CVP. goes and directly connects to the brown port of the central line. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, so remember that because otherwise if you jumble, you will be in trouble. So the three-way tap should come onto this side. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, and there is one small restriction like uh, when we are injecting the cold uh, saline bolus, madam, we need to for a small time, we need to stop uh, inducing other drugs actually. But I don't know how practical it is in the ICU setup. But uh, like uh, if you stop it for a small time only, like you will get a more accurate reading. Okay. So, uh, so the other uh, the sort of suggestion that I did and the one that we did for the last transplant was because we had the three lumen vascat, which has a brown port. 
so this can nicely go and fit into that brown yeah. coat because through the vest cap we only give fluid so it's yeah. okay to flush yeah. it yeah so we don't connect it to the cord lumen central line instead we can connect it into the vest cap okay the free lumen vest cap which is an advantage yeah. okay. so that problem is sorted, sorted out <laughs> okay so this is the cdp line then like i told you you need to have another arterial line that arterial like 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 i told you it should be a femoral arterial line and uh, this is a five french one actually with 20 centimeters length so if you go for an adult patient this is recommended and say if you are using it on a pediatric patient this will be three french or four french and uh, 16 or uh, i think 14 seven centimeters, centimeters. Seven centimeters. Okay. Seven centimeters. Seven centimeters. Right. Yeah. So uh, this length different, uh, differs, so like this is the uh, adult femoral arterial catheter and then how we can connect this is, um, this red color port uh, should be connected to a line from the cardiac output cable, so it goes into this red color port like this and there is a colorless port over here which gets connected to the transducer kit your uh, arterial transducer kit like this there is a small video which i can show you how to set up it on a patient before going out of the monitor i think it's better if i show that this is a different monitor but have a look carefully right this is a different monitor but uh, the have a look carefully the, right? the procedure is the same it seems okay right okay This presentation will show you the basic preparation and setup of post-contour cardiac output monitor or the PICO monitor. PICO is an advanced hemodynamic monitoring that gives complete hemodynamic picture without a pulmonary artery catheter. It provides information such as continuous cardiac output, volumetric preload and afterload, contractility, volume responsiveness, and pulmonary edema or lung water. This video presentation will not discuss detailed information as to what PICO can do and its indication. What will be discussed are supplies that would be needed for monitoring and how to initially set up to begin hemodynamic monitoring. The central venous catheter that will be used is a standard central venous line. However, the arterial line catheter that needs to be placed it's a PICO arterial catheter shown here. If the patient has an existing arterial catheter, it needs to be replaced by a physician using PICO arterial catheter. For children, 3 French 7 cm and 4 French 16 cm PICO arterial catheter can be used with femoral and axillary artery as preferable sites. The procedure in assisting the physician and placing these catheters a central venous line and a PICO arterial catheter is dependent on your own facilities protocol. Now let's begin the setup process. Plug in the PICO monitor. Now connect the white plug PICO arterial transducer slave cable from the back of the PICO monitor to the Phillips cable. Connect this cable with the Phillips interface box or module. Connect the inject tape cable to the brown socket of the thermistor cable. And then connect the thermistor cable to the orange socket on the right side of the PICO monitor. Lastly, connect the pressure cable that will be used later to connect with the arterial transducer. Remove the PICO arterial transducer kit from the sterile package. Make sure all the connections are secure. Prime the transducer kit and attach to the heparin bag or syringe according to your facility's policy. Make sure all air bubbles are removed from the system. And finally, replace the vented caps on the side port of the stock box with the non-vented caps included in the package. Now let's get ready to connect the system with the already placed Pico arterial catheter. 
verify blood return, flush and clamp before disconnecting. Attach a transducer setup, then unclamp the tubing. Connect the transducer cable with the PICO pressure cable. And finally, connect the end of the thermistor cable to the red thermistor connector. Find the injectate temperature sensor housing from the PICO arterial line transducer package. Prime a needleless access gap. And connect this to the injectate temperature sensor housing. Finish priming this setup. Clamp the distal port of the CVL, disconnect the CVP transducer setup, and reconnect on the side port of the stopcock. Now connect the injectate temperature sensor housing on the end port of the stopcock. I just interrupt their window. So, are they connecting the uh, so the three-way tap comes into the distal most one? Yeah. And then the injected housing comes to one end of the three-way tap. Yeah. And then the the free uh, end of the three-way yes. tap will go get the to the CVP, CVP monitor. So, yeah. it will go to the CVP monitoring and then to the separate transducer that goes to the CVP and it goes to the monitor onto a separate cable over here. Right? Okay. So that you got to take it clearly actually. I will do it yeah. again on the monitor. Sure. That is how it is. Gently snap in place the blue end of the injectate sensor cable to the injectate sensor housing. And then clamp the line. With this setup, you are now ready to turn on the Pico monitor, calibrate, and perform thermal dilution. So that is the initial setup matter. Mm -hmm. Then we need to anyway uh, insert a femoral arterial catheter as well. No? Yes. So there is a separate video for that because that is a okay. whole different procedure. Okay. So we'll see that video as well. Okay. Initially, the arterial catheter will be inserted with Seldinger technique. In our example, the place of insertion is the femoral artery. Included in the package of the arterial thermodilution catheter is a guide wire a dilator and two different sizes of introducer needles. Introduce the cannula into the artery with an angle of 45 degrees. Insert the guide wire carefully through the cannula into the artery and withdraw the letter. To enlarge the point of entry, advance the dilator with a twisting motion of the guide wire and remove. The catheter can now be inserted into the vessel over the guide wire. Hold the catheter at desired position and withdraw the guide wire. Connect the already flushed air-free arterial pressure line to the catheter and secure the catheter to the patient using the suture rings. Connect the grounding cable to the connector at the rear panel of the Pico. So that is how you insert the femoral arterial catheter, as you all could see. So one end should be connected to the transducer and the other end should be connected to the monitor end, right? If they didn't understand it, madam, you can play it again. Yeah. Did everybody get it or uh, are there any doubts? Everyone clear on it? Is it here or right? Yeah. yeah how much do you want to skip? Uh, that is the, how the... That part you can see. It's a transducer, right? Yeah. So now we have opening the pulsion pressure monitoring kit. You will also find the injectate temperature sensor housing.
continuous flushing of the pressure line is necessary to avoid any blood clots which may interfere with the pressure signal. The heparinized solution, once connected to the flush line, should then be inflated and maintained at 300 millimeters of mercury. Now attach the pressure transducer to the customized holder at a level which is equal to the patient's heart. Don't forget to flush the pressure line. The pressure transducer can now be connected to the pressure lumen of the arterial catheter with the pressure line. Gently connect the red thermodilution connector of the arterial catheter to the corresponding part of the picothermodilution cable. Please use a three-way stopcock for the attachment of the injectate temperature sensor housing to the distal lumen of the central venous line. Finally, flush with saline solution. Connect the injectate temperature sensor housing carefully to the blue injectate temperature sensor cable. You should hear a click sound on connection. Attach the other end of the injectate temperature sensor cable to the interface cable, which has already been connected to the arterial catheter. You can now fix the orange color-coded plug with the corresponding socket on the front panel of the Pico Plus. Because he's showing how to inject the coal cell. Oh, okay. That's a, ah, that's a, this is the one, right? So we are going to see how uh, to get the uh, coal cell line injected into the uh, catheter system, right? So we are just keeping the rest and uh, we'll see how we, the coal cell line is being injected, right? Now prepare the injectate for the thermodilution measurement. To start the first series of measurements, please select the thermodilution menu on the Pico Plus screen and press start. The injection can be started as soon as the message stable appears. Please ensure that the bolus of every measurement will be injected steadily and in less than five seconds. After approximately 10 seconds, the temperature bolus will have passed the tip of the arterial catheter and the temperature changes will be displayed on the screen. We recommend to perform three thermodilution measurements, one after the other. A recalibration is necessary every eight hours or if the hemodynamic situation of the patient changes drastically. By means of the info button on the thermodilution screen, you have the possibility to delete measurements with the delete key and you can see details of previous measurements. All right. So this is, uh, this is a little different monitor, but the basics is the same. So yeah. that is the way you inject the uh, cold saline. So now we'll go move on to our monitor and India will show us the monitor that is available for us in the ICU, how to set it up and how to get the calibrations going okay right so this is basically the setup uh pico monitor i didn't switch on and do all these processes i will just go to the how to calibrate pico so this is the pico screen but uh, like in the future we will be giving you like upgrading yeah. this system a dedicated pico screen so like you can see uh like i told you earlier we need a cardiac output extension extension or cardiac output module and then uh, this i will show you that port as well so cardiac output uh, cable and the port is always orange in color like i told you madam everything is color coded so you won't get confused so this is the cardiac output port and then we need two pressure monitoring invasive pressure monitoring one for the cvp and the other one for the arterial line so you can you can see all the red color ports are for uh, arterial invasive pressure line this is uh, the ibp cable 
uh, this IBP cable, I think as far as I remember, you can use the same cable which are using, uh, using for min ray as well, mine ray as well. So uh, this is IBP cable. And here, this port can be changed, madam. So one, uh, there are two actually two, two ports in the market. One is having this round color port, yeah. and the other one is having a telephone port kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. We have it. We don't it. The one that we need. Yeah. This one. Yeah. So these are the two uh, two IBP cable ports that is available in the market. Whichever you are getting, we can supply you the. So it is either this or either yeah, sorry, this. this. So this is the end port, which goes to the uh, transducer. Can everybody see? Yeah, these are the two types of end ports, but this is the one that is available for us in Peradeniya. Okay, and the other end of it is quite similar to the Minre inlet, so which has pins. Okay, so it is uh, compatible to the one that is compatible to even Fukoda. Ah, Fukoda, yeah, maybe. Minre and uh, Philips. Okay, right. So, so, if you are at the shortage of wires, you can yeah, run you to a Fukoda or a Mindre and grab one wire. <laughs> Even though we don't recommend this, you can still go on. No problem. So, this is one uh, one arterial cable and you need, like I told you, you need uh, two invasive lines, uh, two like this. So, one goes here. Uh, you can use either of these ports. Like, you can use any of these ports. So, all together, you have three pressure monitoring ports, madam, here. And you can connect to whichever you like. Only thing is that if you are uh, using our monitor, uh, the the which port, whichever port you are connecting to the monitor, you have to define that onto the monitor, madam. Otherwise, monitor won't recognize mm -hmm. which port that you inserted the arterial or CVP line. So, say if you are inserting it from this, I will insert this IBP cable from this extension. So, it's just a click like this. Now we connect it and uh, I will connect the cardiac output cable as well. So this is the cardiac output cable, orange color one. So which goes, ultimately which goes and connects to this box over here. Okay, so this is the kind of PICO monitor, uh, the uh, sort of uh, main thing that, uh, that receives all the wires. Okay, the temperature uh, sensor as well. So you can connect the cardiac output cable like this. And then you need another uh, invasive pressure cable. Can I have, uh, I, for the moment I will connect this, but the port is different. Anyways, I will connect this one. So that I will connect to the next extension, the other one. So one will be for the invasive arterial blood pressure line and the other one will be for the CVP. So mind you, the IBP that we get here is the femoral arterial blood pressure, okay? Because it comes from the femoral artery, artery and this is from the central line, uh, the central venous pressure, okay? So you just have to remember uh, the first extension, you have connected cardiac output and uh, arterial line and the second extension, you have connected CVP. Only thing is that you have to give that command to the monitor that you you have inserted arterial from this extension and CVP from this one. So how to do that? If you go on to the monitor, there is a small uh, icon with the... Uh, Can everyone see the screen now clearly? I don't think they can see this small one, but anyways, they are in, to your leftmost corner, there is an icon which uh, indicates at three X, X signs. So click on that. That is actually what we call the measurement selection. Click on it. Then you can see the setup like this. Whichever you have connected here, madam, you can get a display of that. So here, uh, this is the port. This is the extension where I have given arterial. So it is already marked as ART, no problem. Okay. Then the other one, that's also again marked as CVP. So no confusion here. So we have already marked the correct label. Say in case this port is deactivated. Now when you uh, click on this icon, you have, uh, what you will see is uh, grayed out uh, ports like this. So if you get a scenario like that, first of all, what you have to do is just activate that port. How to activate it is, there is a pop-up menu uh, on the, the bottom. Uh, then there is an icon called activate. Just 
just click on it and that will activate the code i think you all have got it then uh, say now this is a, uh, the uh, uh, like earlier somebody else has given a separate label for it we'll say uh, they have given a o something they have given a o something so uh, you need to first change the label to a correct label so in our case we will be deriving uh, our uh, cardiac output from uh, arterial art so change this label to the sign art like that so just like that you can change the label if the the code is deactivated you can activate it like that so then we'll cancel this right now we have given the correct uh, command so then shall i come on? yeah yeah of course okay so this is the cardiac output cable i told you uh, like we saw in the video the procedure you need to uh, set up the cvp line and the arterial line and that that arterial line has to be a femoral line then this red port should be connected here and the other one should go into your uh, arterial transducer kit and through your cvp line the distal most lumen cvp line you need to connect the temperature port the temperature probe is connected to the uh, brown color port over here so it's like this you can connect it like this and then this blue color temperature port uh, you can flush this and you can connect it to the cvp line and you can connect this this uh, small tip this uh, small tip this this is actually a sensor so you can connect it like this and this goes to the cvp line this is more cvp line and then that procedure is okay like i think you have got a clear understanding from the video then i will go how to set it up on the monitor how to get the pico layout so this is what we will basically get then how to activate pico uh, the the measurement selection i told you just click on it and you will see a cardiac output port here then click on that and see first of all if it is activated or deactivated so in this case it's already activated so deactivated in the sense you will see a grayed out port like this so if it is deactivated just activate our cardiac output port then go to set up cardiac output set up cardiac output then uh, uh, set up cardiac output menu will uh, pop up like this uh, first of all here we need to select the correct method of measuring monitoring cardiac output because there are two methods one is the transpulmonary uh, method and the other one is the right heart method uh, so for the moment we will be using the transpulmonary method so first of all select that uh, select the source like which method we are using so in this case usually so usually we use the uh, the right uh, right heart method isn't it not the transpulmonary method the one that we use can i mean with the central line no matter we use the transpulmonary is it yeah now oh, this okay. right heart method includes a pa catheter ah, it's a right highly right. invasive ah, process okay. okay so pico is uh, transpulmonary okay. so this is transpulmonary then scroll down and you can see cardiac output just click on cardiac output and you will get the cardiac output uh, the screen a uh, calibration window actually this is the calibration window so here uh i forgot to tell you one thing like before anything uh, before uh, anything like this first of all we have to insert the patient's details to the monitor i think you are anyway doing that uh, in the icu if not first of all please uh, like enter all the patient details especially height weight of the patient because then only the monitor will be calculating the bsa matter so you have to enter that so how to enter it is uh, this is the patient demographics bar click on it for the moment i will enter something name of the patient enter first name enter mrn is the bed head number enter uh, then gender date of birth enter paste mode 
is whether the patient is using an internal pacemaker or not. So for the moment, we'll keep it as off. Then height. I will put something around 153. Then weight. 62 or something. Then any special notes on the patient, enter. And then you have to confirm from here and all the patient details will be admitted here. Before anything else, you have to enter the patient details. Then we will go to the cardiac output screen. Oh. Now, based on uh, this patient's height and weight, the BSA is uh, 1.59 square meters. Body surface area. Yeah, yeah. surface area. Body surface area is 1.59. Then, uh, uh, based on that BSA, uh, uh, the monitor will be recommending your recommended injected volume matter. If not, you can decide it. Okay. If not, if you click here, here, okay. injected volume. Here, recommended injected volume is 10 milliliters. 10 milliliters. So we have inserted 15, but the monitor is recommending okay. to use 10 milliliters. So even 10 is enough so that we yeah. don't uh, overload the patient. Fluid to the patient matter. Yeah. For example, if we do a pediatric patient, yeah. so when we get the body surface area, so we will get a lower injected volume for a pediatric patient. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So then we are not overloading the yeah, patient. overloading it through. Yeah. So you okay. have to uh, uh, select it as 10. Select it because that is a recommended uh, volume. So uh, BSA is okay, injected volume is okay. Catheter constant. Uh, normally, when we insert the PICO catheter, it automatically uh, gets the catheter constant. Be before there was a procedure where we can uh, insert it, but they have not mentioned the catheter constant here. So I think it will be automatically detected down to the monitor. That is it. Catheter constant. What does it mean? It's actually it's matter, volume, is it? Sorry, is it the volume of the catheter? Uh, no, that is actually, I think, uh, I am also uh -huh. not sure about that okay, catheter. So something, catheter yeah, something. Uh, here, the catheter, uh, the 342. Oh, okay. So here, 342. 342. So ah. just make sure you enter okay. the correct. ACC number. Yeah, sort of an ACC, ACC number. Okay. So it's uh, mentioned over here. Just make sure you enter the same uh, number okay. to this catheter constant. That's it. Then what we need is, the window is okay. Now we are ready to do a uh, injection so first of all um, you have to like uh, prepare like uh, in that video they have recommended to take three salines but normally madam uh, through three salines i don't think you can calculate an average what we recommend is around five salines five if three is okay no problem then we have to prepare that uh, 10 milliliter uh, syringe salines uh, co uh, co uh, the temperature should be zero celsius liquid then uh, here press start cardiac output then it will show stable baseline in check now so wait for that uh, the message like just don't insert it right away like just wait for the signal where stable baseline in check now then you can uh, inject the call saline uh, steadily without any jerks within five seconds to the patient just don't hurry, just smoothly insert within five seconds. Then I will do a demo injection here. So I will just click on demo inject. So here, injection detected. You will get the message like this here when you are doing it live also. So curve like this will appear. So that is the sort of ideal curve that you should see. Yeah. It looks like a normal display yes, curve. Yeah. So it should have a very nice upstroke yes. and a downstroke. Okay. So otherwise it is not a proper bonus. So this is our curve. Yeah. Uh, so how and do we know India, that bolus is effective or not? Uh, yeah, by looking at that's numbers? a good question, madam. So how can how you can know if this bolus is effective or not? Is you will get a cross if it, if you get a cross mark over here that says uh, that reading is not accurate. You have to do it again. If you get a green color tick over here, then it says okay your injection is accurate. We I can proceed on with the reading. 
so that is it so cardiac output and everything is in indicated here anyway my injection was not successful anyway madam in the demonstration mode they don't take it everything will be a cross sign this is the one we should know because yeah. they create a cross sign that means we have to repeat another one repeat another one yeah. Yeah. if not uh, uh, they will be indicated in the green color okay. i will do the second one so like this you have to take like three uh, three if you are satisfied okay you can uh, stop with three or as uh, continue it up to five measurements i will do another one start cardiac output wait for that start cardiac output icon to uh, appear in black then they say stable baseline, stable baseline say in check now. now yeah now you can inject okay. within five seconds without any jerks i will do a demo injection again Sometimes uh, you will be getting a signal saying uh, unstable baseline injection not recommended. So don't inject during that time. There, there can be temperature drifts and all matter. Mm -hmm. So wait for the uh, wait for the monitor to stable okay. the baseline and then only you can inject. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry about this uh, because of the demonstration uh, mode only. This cross mark is appearing. Otherwise. Uh, you will get a uh, green color tick mark here. So the cardiac output is something around 5.66 and here 11.4. Uh, 11 so madam, there is a big difference between those two cardiac output now. That is why we are recommending you to take around 5 measurements. Uh, that is why we are recommending you to take 5 measurements. So in the calibration, like to calibrate the cardiac output, you can get the measurements which are very close to each other to get calculate an average i will show you I, i'll do another one so ready for a new measurement wait for that uh, message okay. then yeah. start card cardiac output stable baseline in check now then you can inject i will do a demo inject So if you were very slow, if you were too slow, like if it took more than five seconds, the yeah. graph will be like that. Very flat. Like like then it will be like sort of along with it. Okay. Again, the cardiac output is something around 11.4. Wait before uh, starting new measurement. So you have to wait. Just don't push the button right away. Just wait for the uh, ready for measurement uh, message. I will take up to five measurements. Sorry, sorry. It is not an effective baller, so you can see it's very sort of narrowed and short so and elongated so uh, it is not an effective one and of course the monitor will say it is effective or not by picking so stable baseline in yeah. yeah. so we'll see how you get a kind of an overall number yeah. overall. how do you get the cardiac so for index values you have to enter patients age weight height all the demographic data should be entered then only you can get the yeah. index if you don't insert the indexes, you will get the cardiac output SVR, uh, not the SVRI index, not the SVR index. Okay, so index is the most accurate for that particular patient. Otherwise, they will uh, kind of uh, uh, cook some uh, data that is already available in the machine, and they will give a kind of a uh, overall number by looking at the population data, yeah. which is already fed to the monitor, which is not kind of appropriate to the patient. Wait before starting the measurements. I will take an, uh, one more measurement. Ready for new measurement. Start cardiac output. Stable baseline in check now. So that looks a little better. Yeah, a little better. That graph looks a little better. Okay. 
This is quite similar to pulmonary artery shortage in the region. Same thing happens in PA shortage in the region as well. It is the same sort of technique. Yeah. When they want it be good to keep the water in a cold box, cool box just under the patient's yeah, head. Yeah, if you can okay, do it like practically, in a that, that will be more accurate. Yeah, because, because I think our temperature may be changed. Yeah, when definitely. Out from the yeah, 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 definitely. Think, if you yeah. can keep it in a cool box or something Better. like that, more accurately. I'll do that next time. Yeah. yeah. That's because we don't know whether it is at 4 centigrade. Yeah, huh? that's right, exactly. Yeah. Because it, it is change, not 4 yeah. zero centigrade at all. Yeah. So it can be like heating. So the readings that you get are accurate. Because the kind of temperature drop is different. Yeah, yeah. So we have get, uh, like we have uh, got around five measurements. Okay. So using these five measurements, select the most, uh, like um, uh, uh, to calculate the average, select the most uh, like close, uh, closely, uh, close measurements, like see here, 11.4, then 5.66 is too uh, low, then, yeah, again, um, 11.4, 8.5, we can rule out, then 11.3. So I will, uh, I will just choose first, uh, third and the fifth measurements for my cardiac CCO calibration, continuous cardiac output calibration. So uh, you can anyway ask it from the monitor as well. If you um, if you select select trial, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, click on accept and reject, and monitor uh, will show you uh, which um, measurement to be uh, deleted, like to uh, reject, or else you can do it manually as well. Mm -hmm. So I will just. Uh, select this one i mean like the ones that turn uh, red it will be automatically rejected madam. rejected deleted okay. it won't uh, it won't be uh, like taken into cco calibration okay. then so i will reject this one as well not this one i will keep it mm -hmm. then this one reject reject this also reject okay. i will reject these two because uh, they are a little bit lower than 11 point something so i will take into calibration 11.4 11.1 11.3 these three then after that select so in the view here the numbers that you have got is the uh, the cardiac output parameters cardiac output cfi cardiac index vtbvi so all those has been calculated for each bolus so you can you select at least three or whatever like i mean the numbers that are quite similar to each and then get the sort of average at the end okay so then those are being selected after that what you have to do is save cardiac output and calibrate continuous cardiac output continuous cardiac output is where we get the pulse control measurements madam mm -hmm. so from cardiac output we will get the thermodilation factors yeah. cco we will get all the pulse control okay. factors so save cardiac output and calibrate continuous cardiac output Did you all get it so it, it analyzes the pulse wave as well as the bolus yeah the cardiac output so CCO is for the pulse wave analysis and CO is for the bolus and the cardiac output yeah. analysis. Understand? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just saw this here. If you uh, like, you can ask any question after yeah. this. Then, uh, okay, I did it. Now uh, it's all right. Now we'll go to the hemodynamic calculations. This is where this PICO screen is very useful, madam. Otherwise, you will have to select the hemodynamic calculations from here and then yeah. only you will display all the values. We will uh, upgrade this to a PICO monitoring screen. So he click on hemocals and you will get all the parameters, okay. uh, the calibrated parameters over here. So if you have any doubt which uh, uh, the, the abbreviated form is for, you can just click on it and it will show you the long term. So straw volume, say EVLY is extra vascular lung water index. So you can see that. And if you can't remember the normal ranges, mm -hmm. we can't keep in mind everything. No? So yeah. you can select, where is it? Um, on the ranges, is it? On off ranges. And exactly. Is that on one? off ranges. Yeah. So uh, the normal the ranges, ranges will be displayed here. So Vindya, how can you select the ones that we want to see on the monitor? So the specific ones, like for instance, if I want to see the pulse pressure variation, stroke volume, then the cardiac output, yeah. cardiac index, and the SCRI. Right. How can I get it onto the yeah. monitor? So uh, in our PICO screen, yeah. you will get it. Otherwise, uh, in this normal screen, what you can do is, madam, 
there are blank spaces over here can you see yeah all yeah. these are blank spaces so just click on one blank space and then not over here because it's already assigned for NIBP, NIBP. so I can't use that. Yeah. So le let's say here, for example, SI, I'll take change this okay. SI. Uh, just imagine this is a blank space, blank space huh? not okay. a green color one. Okay. So click on it and then, sorry, hold on. Because it's already assigned, I can't change that. Mm. All these are assigned for something, assigned, isn't it? Oh, ah, yeah, I can change okay. it. So there's one space there. So, no, still so in the actual, that was the problem we got. On that day. So on there. All right, you can do it from here. Yeah. So you have got a blank yeah. space there. Yeah. Uh, uh, just forget about the blank space. Say even if you got a green color icon like this, madam, mm -hmm. you can click on it. Now it says CCO, but I want EVLW or something like that. Click on it. Then you can scroll down. Mm -hmm. Then it says change numeric. Mm -hmm. Click on change numeric. Go down. Um, e V L W I. Okay. Click on that. That will come. Okay. Right. And we'll do another one. Mm -hmm. I want to get um, S V R I. Okay, S V R I. I'll get it over here. Okay. Click on it. Scroll down. Change numeric. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. S V D is here. S V is here, S I is here. Kyoto P B I. S V B is here. Yeah, S V is here. S V R I. No, S V R I is not on the pop-up menu. No, no. Uh, no, don't worry about that. I will, yeah. I will ask Nalika to upgrade it into oh, yeah. the Pico screen. I will show you that screen, madam. So, <laughs> on that screen, we will have the Pico yes. as well as we will have the IBP and the central line. Yeah, madam. It can it will be categorized as yeah. preload, yeah. afterload, and contractility. Okay. Uh, like so, you will oh, okay. get the categories like that. So now the issue is here. This is the conventional one, right? Which has ECG uh, already designated. Tap no, so that's it. This is sort of a conventional Phoenix monitor, which has got a Pico module. So what the issue is when you try to uh, set up the Pico, it's a struggle because you you don't have much time to struggle and uh, set up the Pico. So you so they are going to set up a uh, proper screen, which will be only a Pico uh, sort of uh, dedicated screen. So it won't be a kind of a monitor that gives easy yeah. and tap and everything. Right. Uh, Madam, so far. Yeah, I that think... is okay, India. Yeah. So if you uh, set up the monitor onto those uh, with all those numbers, yeah, it's okay to have preload, offload, and contracting so yeah. that we will have all the indexes. Yeah, parameters, parameters related, related to those. Yeah. Okay. Categorized. I will all show right. you that screen as a picture. Okay. All right. That is more, I yeah. think, uh, very user friendly for you. Yeah. Rather than getting all yeah. clicking on these parameters okay. and getting. So okay. far, uh, <laughs> do you all have any questions? So is that, is, uh, that, you that is sort of all that we wanted to actually demonstrate. Okay. And, uh, so and I forgot to tell one thing, madam. Yeah. Um, uh, like, say, uh, the hemodynamic uh, condition of the patient drastically changed, like it was said in the video. You need to anyway do a recalibration every uh, eight hours. Yeah, every once in eight hours, you have to do it again. Yeah. And in the middle, if you uh, feel like now your cardiac output is uh, like not, it, it's not the value that is displayed on the monitor, it should change. Okay. What you can do is, Go to cardiac output again. Cardiac output setup. Uh, sorry, CCO. Just to do a, a resample mm -hmm. virus. Okay. Cardiac output setup. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. See cardiac output. Mm -hmm. And here, go to uh, hemocars. What you can do is check here. Now mm -hmm. uh, you are not sure about the values that is displayed on the monitor. Okay. But uh, you can't do a recalibration because it's less than eight hours. Okay. So what you can do is like a spot calibration, madam. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you can do like perform calibration. Mm -hmm. 
perform calculation yeah per perform cal sorry cal perform calculation. calculation and it will resample the vitals and show you a more uh, oh, like okay. accurate read okay so it is sort of a stat number like yeah stat a fresh number one. a fresh number yes madam okay yeah, because yeah. like uh, sometimes the, this can change oh, like oh, if you do a spot check like okay. a spot check kind of thing okay. it will up update the parameters okay, okay doc yeah thank you so much <laughs> thank so, you so uh, much did everyone understand if they i think yeah. They can ask. yeah they should be okay at least they would have got a little idea about it yeah. and then they can work on if it you, yeah if you yeah. Uh, put it on a live session i can come yeah. and then we sure. can do it on a real sure. session yeah yeah okay right thank you so okay. much yeah, so, yeah, yeah thank you so much india for coming today and uh, helping us with pico mm -hmm. And uh, if you all have any doubts, you all can raise. So you all can uh, kind of pass it to me and then I can clarify through India. Is that okay? Right. Thank you very much for joining. Right. Patum, thank you very much. So I'll stop um, uh, screen sharing and uh, stop recording. Right. Thank you, Patum.